Okay, so thank you so much, Amy, for volunteering to uh, do the interview series for the Climate and Diversity Committee in honor of Women's History Month uh, in March, which we'll be you know, releasing the videos. Uh, to start, I would like, uh, I'm gonna ask you to uh, introduce yourself, but then also give background of you know, where you come from in science and how you got here today. Yeah. Um, so uh, my name is Amy Bull, and I'm an associate professor of chemistry and biochemistry and molecular biology here at Penn State. Um, and I guess I've been here for um, almost 10 years. Uh, and so um, before that, I was a postdoctoral scholar at Northwestern University, where I focused on structural biology of metalloproteins, um, which is very similar to what I do now. Um, and then I was a graduate student at Caltech before that. Um, and I think maybe one thing that's worth mentioning for this video series specifically is that um, my PhD advisor and my postdoc advisor were both women. Um, so th those experiences, I think, really um, were uh, were formative and um, helping me, you know, get to where I am now. Wow, that's that's wonderful. And not many people get that experience of having that many women mentors uh, throughout their career. So that's quite fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess you kind of mentioned them already, and one of the questions I was going to ask is, have there been any influential women throughout your career um, that have, you know, either motivated you to do science, stay in science, or per, uh, pick this particular career path? So could you maybe comment some more on how their mentorship influenced you today, or to get to this point yeah. today? Yeah, so I, I think I certainly wouldn't be in the kind of job that that um, I have now without having uh, my PhD advisor and postdoctoral advisor um, as models, as role models. I, I think I didn't um, I didn't start off my training in in science, especially after college, um, with a very clear idea of what I wanted to do with my career. Um, I was interested. I, I liked science. I wanted to know more. I liked research and wanted to do that more, but I think I ultimately thought I might end up working as a high school teacher or something like that. Um, I had some vague interest in teaching, but I didn't really see myself as a college professor um, and certainly you know, not um, a person who would run their own research group or anything like that. Um, and as, as a college student, and even before that, you know, I think most of my professors and, and teachers were were men. Um, that there weren't a lot of other uh, other female um, chemistry majors even uh, when I was a college student. So, I think being able to see someone doing the job who um, you know had things in common with, with me uh, made made a huge difference. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So I think. Um, when I was a PhD student, I, I, I worked for Jackie Barton, who is a leader in um, the area of, of electron transfer. Um, and I, it has a huge, she has a huge research group. I think when I started, there were maybe like 30 people in the group. I remember we had a softball team. And um, if like the other team didn't show up, we could like split into two and play <laughs> each other. So there was a, you know, a big, a big enterprise. Um, and she was extremely organized. You know, she sort of ran it like a company in some way. And I think you have to, if you have a group that's that big, um, but everything was very structured. And, you know, we had time when we could go and talk to her, um, but she was also very open too. I think um, she had a nice, Nice balance of being um, available to everyone, uh, you know, especially if you were having trouble in your project, um, but but also having you know like regular checkpoints and ways that you could interface with her, and then also with other people in the group that are working on things that are similar. And, um, so it was just a really nice example of how you can um, you can you can run a big a big team um, and develop creative research directions. Uh, and she also, you know, she had a family and um, uh, and had that other part of it too. And I think that's something I, I appreciate now um, that I've started a family recently is just having a, a model for how to balance all of that um, and be successful in, in both arenas. Wow. So do you, speaking on that topic, do you have any tips for women who might want to try to balance those two items in the future? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of in it now, so I don't know if what I'm doing is great, um, but uh, but I think even, you know, when you when you start a faculty position, um, it's it's a lot of the same issues, you know, that you're um, you're transitioning to a, a, a new job that is you know definitely different than just being in the lab doing research all the time. There's a lot of new things that you have to learn in terms of managing people and um, 
uh, coming up with research ideas, you know, that other people can, uh, can develop and pursue, you know, not, not just for your own, your one project. Um, yes. mm -hmm. So, uh, so I think I find myself, you know, using a lot of the same coping strategies that I um, used when I was an assistant professor, you know, you, um, you're trying to do things in defined periods of time. Um, and I think it's, um, for me, the hardest part was just dealing with um, the differences. I, I think as a as a trainee, I always felt a lot of pressure to be really perfect about everything. Um, I definitely had to um, like a writing paper to spend a lot of time on it and make sure that you know like every single thing is um, is ideal before I would pass it on to my you know supervisor or whatever. Um, but I think I think like once you um, once you're taking on more responsibility, you just don't have that luxury anymore. Um, so for me, just realizing that you know, okay, I've I've trained for a long time. I know how to do all of these things. I don't maybe need to spend um, hours and hours reading over um, you know, a manuscript, and, like, I don't know, five times to make sure it's perfect before we submit it. Um, just realizing that, you know, that you, you're, you're well-trained for what you're doing and that um, you, you, know, you, you don't have to be perfect about every single thing. Um, even further. Um, so I wanted to ask, you know, what brought you to chemistry you know, in the first place. So I've, I've always been interested in science. And I think it, a lot of it comes from the fact that my dad um, is a biochemistry professor. Um, and so he would, uh, when when I was in, in elementary school, he would, um, he would do you know, like math problems with me that were above and beyond, you know, what we were doing in, in school at the time. Um, and he would uh, come to my classroom uh, when I was in elementary school and uh, bring science demos and we would work on them together. Um, I, uh, I have a story that I've told, I've told before um, where, you know, we were preparing to do um, an experiment where I think, um, I think what we were trying to do is use sodium metal uh, to, to make a flame in, in water. And we were practicing it in my, my mother's kitchen. Uh, and the, the little piece of sodium metal jumped out of the beaker, whatever vessel we were using. And it like skittered across the counter, left all these burn marks. <laughs> so she was not too happy no. about that. <laughs> and we had to practice outside <laughs> after, after that. But, um, but a, a lot of those things, I think, um, it taught me that there's you know a lot of fun, exciting things about science that um, that you can do like above and beyond what you learn in the classroom. And I think I, I, when I got to college, I was prepared, um, you know, to explore other opportunities, like get into research and, um, and you know, things, do things beyond just kind of the standard coursework um, because, because of that. Uh, and I wish that, you know, for, for more kids um, that, getting involved in, uh, in, in research and, and those kinds of scientific um, endeavors with, that that was easier to do, um, you know, even in high school or, or maybe, you know, even before that. Uh, Cause I, I think, I think you, everyone is interested in inquiry, right? And it's, I, I think not, um, at least when I was a student, it was not a typical part of the science curriculum. What is your favorite uh, Nobel prize recipient of all time? Oh, um, in fact, I remember when I was um, when I was a first year graduate student, I had um, I had this book and it was actually um, it just, you know, like biographies of all of the women who have won a Nobel Prize in science. Um, and, I, and I remember I like stayed up all night reading it one night when I was home for uh, Christmas vacation. Um, and the, the exciting thing is that like even since that was published, this was in like, I don't know, 2003 or something like that, there's there's a number of um, new uh, recipients, um, mm -hmm. uh, including people who are you know, familiar to us, like Frances Arnold and Jennifer Doudna. Um, but I think I have to say actually that Jennifer Doudna is my, um, my, my favorite um, Nobel Prize winner. Um, I, in part because I, she, um, she went to the same college as I did not at the same time, but um, you know, like maybe 10 years before. Uh, so I, I was aware of her work, um, you know, even uh, as a college student. Uh, and this was before she got involved in all of the CRISPR stuff. She um, was you know, famous for her work just studying uh, RNA and RNA protein interactions um, and as a structural biologist. Um, so when I was a graduate student, she came to Caltech to give a talk and I was assigned to be her student host. So I walked around with her all day and she was so nice. Like we talked so much about, you know, just being a, a a college student at the place where we both went and she was completely relatable. It was so wonderful. And I think she's, um, her work obviously is, is amazing and the ability to sort of capitalize on something that um, is potentially quite useful uh, for, for humankind in, in general is, um, 
it's I think very admirable. All right. Well, thank you so much yeah. for you know uh, volunteering to do the interview. Um, and I'm I'm glad I got to learn a lot about you today. And I hope you know tons of people in the department can uh, also. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is a great, a great idea. And I'm looking forward to seeing the, the end result. Yeah. Um.